There was a fierce battle on a planet known as New Vegeta. The planet crumbled and quavered under the pressure of two enormous powers that were fighting. The one known as Goku was about to fall into the hands of the so-called legendary Super Scion, but like always the Earth-raised Scion managed to come up with a plan to beat the rampaging Scion. Goku collected all of the remaining energy from his friends and with that prepared himself to beat the other Scion. The legendary Scion Broly was laughing evilly at Goku as he was ready to finish the good-hearted Scion, but unknown to him, Goku was ready to finish this fight before the meteor could strike the planet ha 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 you are going to die, right here and now Kakarot laughed Broly as he rushed towards Goku ready to punch him and finish what he started I will not give up Broly. I have all the energy from my friends and thanks to them I will beat you. Yelled Goku at Broly while he was stuck on the wall ha ha, that won't help you Kakarot. Now Dai yelled Broly with a laugh as he was about to punch Goku, but to his shock, Goku managed to free his right hand from the wall and catch Broly's punch. Broly was shocked even more when he saw that Goku powered you enough to obliterate the whole wall behind his back. I told you I will beat you Broly and I could only do it with the help of my friends and family spoke Goku seriously and punched Broly in the face, sending the giant Scion ward the ground. The legendary Scion quickly snapped from his shock, Furious, not willing to admit that there is someone stronger than him, the legend. Broly stood up and powered up even more, as his golden slash green aura flared around him wildly. Kakarot, Kakarot! You are dead! Growled Broly and once again rushed towards Goku, leaving destruction behind him. Goku didn't want to waste any second and launched himself at the large scion, determined to finish this fight once and for all sorry Broly, but I can't let you have it your way. I really wish you were different, you would make a great sparring partner. Hiya! Yelled Goku who suddenly appeared in front of Broly, surprising the legendary Super Scion. Before Broly could do something or anything, Goku delivered a powerful punch direct in Broly's gut, piercing through it and sent Broly to fly into the sky screaming in pain. Na no! Cat Kakarot! Yelled Broly with all of his might but it ended fast as he exploded in the sky. Goku didn't bother with Broly anymore and quickly rushed towards his friends and family so they could escape from this planet since the meteor was few seconds away. Goku quickly grabbed everyone and with his instant transmission moved in the spaceship in which were Krillin, Master Rashi, and Oolong. The ship was far enough from the planet and it was in no danger from the explosion. The Earth Warriors after a day arrived on Earth and prepared themselves for the Cell Games which were to be held in two days days have passed since the battle on the so-called planet New Vegeta, which was no more and what only remained was nothing but a space dust. Nothing remained alive from that planet except one thing, one being who subconsciously activated an energy shield before the planet exploded. The being was asleep while the energy shield was surrounding him and protecting from any harm, but he didn't have any idea that he was going straight towards a storm. The storm swallowed the being and sent him in one place he surely never heard of. It was a beautiful day in Water 7, the sun was bright and with little clouds in the sky. Everything was peaceful after the incident with Straw Hat Pirates, CP9 and also with the huge wave Aqua Laguna. Everybody in town was repairing their home or helping the others. The Straw Hats were now the top news in town after what they've done in Eni's lobby and with the truth that they didn't try to kill the mayor of the town, Iceberg. Little did everyone know that a dangerous being was about to land in their town. While everybody was consumed with repairs and works, nobody noticed that something was falling down from the sky. The thing landed on a deserted beach creating a small crater beneath his body. The being with mid-long black messy hair slowly opened his eyes as the bright sun and the waves from the sea woke him up. He slowly managed to change his position and sit while he scanned his body. To his great surprise, his wounds were almost all healed, only a few scars were visible on his chest and on the stomach where he was punched by Goku. He placed his right hand on the almost healed wound and tried to remember what happened. He knew why he couldn't remember anything that happened. Every time he transformed into the legendary Super Scion, he was completely out of control and couldn't remember anything. It's the same thing as with the Ozara transformation, he never had any control or any memory. But there was always his father controlling him, manipulating him with that stupid device and ordering him around like he was some kind of puppet. He searched with his eyes to see if his father was here, but there was no sight of him when suddenly Broly remembered. He could remember now, 
how his father tried to run away in his space pod and leave his only son at the mercy of the meteor, but he stopped his father and crushed him inside his pod and ended the coward's life. Broly had mixed feelings about this memory. Yes, his father used him for his own purposes and always ordered him around and yelled at him, yet he was the man who was his father. Broly quickly snapped from this memory as he punched the ground causing it to tremble. The Scion stood up from the ground ready to walk away and see if there were people here when another memory hit him. This time, it was the moment when he was beaten and almost killed by Kakarot. In his memory, he could hear what the kind Scion said and Broly only gritted his teeth at that. Broly wondered if Goku was even alive, from what he remembered the meteor was about to destroy the planet on which they were fighting on. Broly's thoughts were cut by his stomach growl, the tall scion noticed that he didn't eat anything in a while, so he decided to walk towards the block of buildings and find something to eat on the shore not very far away from the place where the straw hats were recuperating from their fights. One man was walking by the shore with his right hand on the sword and with the other in his pocket. He was walking back to the place where they have been gathered when something caught his attention on the ground, huh? What's that? He thought as he walked closer and to his surprise saw a big hole on the ground what the hell happened here? This is a big hole said the surprised swordsman out loud as he examined the hole well whatever it is I don't care better go back to the others concluded the green haired man and walked back towards the house where his friends were resting. Meanwhile Broly walked into the streets of the city and was surprised that the people here looked quite similar to his race. He could feel that they were very weak and that was one thing he despised the most the weak. That thought quickly vanished from his mind when he picked a scent of food not too far from where he was. The scion started to walk faster, not caring for the people in front of him. Some people were even tossed in the sea by the force of the scion, but Broly didn't bother with that. His mind and stomach were after food, and he was sure to get his food. He could smell the food better now, which made him positive that he was on the right track. He walked few meters straight when he stopped near the corner to see if he was going in the right way. He smelled with his nose where to go next and he could tell that the food was just behind the corner. He walked on the left and what first caught his attention was a lot of people in front of a house, but the scion snapped from it when he smelled that the food was just here, where he was standing. Broly could tell that this was some kind of a shop since the food was out and ready for sale. The scion didn't even bother to look at the man who was staring at him while he tried to tell something. Hello sir. Do you want to buy something today? Asked the owner politely to the scion who didn't even hurt the man because of how eager he was to eat all the food, sir. Can you hear me? If you don't have money to pay for the food, then I must ask you to leave, stated the owner this time louder enough for the scion to hear him. But the scion's expression only darkened at the man who yelled at him in the place where the pirates were resting. Everybody was shocked by some news they heard, but they quickly snapped when they heard and saw that somebody was cutting the marines in the courtyard. Huh? What's happening outside? Asked Garp as he looked outside the hole that he made with his strong punch. Oh look his Zoro said Luffy with a big smile on his face and waved towards the swordsman who already defeated almost all the marines. Don't cut the marines idiot. They are not here to catch us. Yelled Sanji angrily at Zoro who immediately stopped when he heard the last part and put away his two swords HM. All right then and who do you call an idiot? Yelled Zoro furiously at Sanji as he walked in the house when he noticed an old man near him and who is this? Asked the swordsman as he pointed his left index finger towards the older man. Well, that's Vice Admiral Garp and he's also Luffy's grandfather explained Robin still surprised by the news she heard today about her Captain Origins really. Asked Zoro who was a little bit surprised to hear that Luffy's grandfather was a Nareen and a Vice Admiral. Yeah, I guess I forgot to tell all of you that. Haha <laughs> laughed Luffy who was quickly punched from behind by an annoyed Nami ouch. Now that we heard what you said, Gramps, when will you leave? I just arrived here and you want your grandfather to leave? What kind of a grandson are you? Yelled Garp as he grabbed Luffy by his shirt collar. You are the one who come here and started to beat me, old man. Yelled Luffy back only to see that his grandfather was about to punch him when all of them heard a loud scream from the outside few moments before somebody screamed. Broly dangerously glanced at the man who yelled at him and ordered him to go away. No one ever dared to do something like that to him and this little, old weak fool was ordering him around. Broly smirked at the man, who sweated a little in fear because of the look on Broly's face. Please, please, sir, if you don't have money, go and look someplace else, said the owner this time quietly. But Broly kept smirking while with his hand picked a piece of meat that was ready for sale and eat it in one bite. This is good. I will eat all of it, spoke Broly quietly so that the owner could barely hear him. 
The owner looked shocked as he saw that the scion was eating all of his meat, which was supposed to be for sale. The owner snapped from his shock and ran away from the food and Broly, who didn't even bother to look where the weak man went, the owner approached the Marines who were in the garden of a house where their vice admiral was. He told to the two Marines what was going on, and they decided to help the old man. They quickly approached the shop and saw that almost everything was eaten by the tall scion. Hey you, big guy called one of the Marines as he walked close to Broly while his partner was right near him and the owner behind them, smiling at the thoughts how they will beat the man who ate all of his food. Broly glanced at the man who called him with one eye and only smirked at the two men in front of him, weaklings. He looked at the man behind them and saw him smiling. The Scion figured that the man probably called this planet authority for what he has done which caused Broly only to chuckle at this as he put the last piece of meat in his mouth he said something you freak. Now put your hands down and come with us. You are under arrest, you thief ordered the other marine as he aimed his rifle at Broly. The Scion looked at the man who was aiming at him and was irritated by this. Stupid weakling threatening him while he was eating, oh he will pay. Imagine Broly as he slowly put his hands down and only smirked at the three man good, now come closer, but slowly ordered the marine on which Broly smirked even more, but he did what the man said. He slowly approached them and was in front of the two marines. The marine on the right side was about to put handcuffs on Broly when the scion grabbed the man's hand and started to squeeze it. The man yelled in pain after which he fell down on his knees and tried to break free but nothing. Hey leave him you freak! Now or I will shoot you! Yelled the Marine on the left who immediately aimed at Broly. The tall scion smirked at the man and squeezed the hand of the other Marine, even more, making the man on the ground scream in pain, Dear, you asked for this! Yelled the standing Marine and fired at Broly. The bullet hit Broly right on his chest, but it did nothing, it just bounced back completely smashed. The Marine and the owner were shocked by this and didn't have any idea what to do. Broly at that moment let go of the Marine he was holding since he knew that the weak man was no longer conscious. The other Marine gulped in fear and didn't know what to do while the owner screamed in fear and run away. Broly saw that the man run away, but he would not let him escape after what he had done. Coward said Broly who caught the Marine attention, but to the young Marine shocked, the tall scion disappeared. The Marine looked right and left to see where Broly went when he heard another loud scream, but this time from behind. He turned around only to see Broly holding the owner by his throat. You brought this upon yourself. Now Dice spoke Broly coldly as he was about to suffocate the owner when he heard a voice coming from his left. Hold it, big guy. Why don't you leave this man alone and have a talk with me, said the Vice Admiral Garp as he cracked his fists. Silence. No one said a thing after the Vice Admiral showed up in front of the tall scion. Everyone gathered around the Vice Admiral and the scion patiently waited for what is going to happen. Kobe and Helmeppo, the two who were picked by Garp were just standing behind the old man and like others waited for the Scion to release the shop owner. The Scion was just standing there with the owner's neck in his hand. He looked at the old man that approached him and at the old man that surrounded him. He noticed that all of them were nothing but weaklings unlike the old man in front of him. Broly glanced back at the old Marine and he could tell that the man was strong, but nothing compared to him. Broly thought for a moment what to do with the weakling in his hand when he decided to play along with the old vice admiral, it could be entertaining. Broly smirked as he let go of the man who fell down on the ground and immediately ran away from the scion. Garp looked at the man on the floor and noticed that the man was not heavily injured. The vice admiral immediately shifted his eyes back at the tall scion and analyzed the young man. He could tell that the young man in front of him was in a fight recently. The scars on his body were still fresh and bloodied, but the man didn't seem to have any problem with that. Garp slowly approached the scion and looked him in the eyes, young man, would you tell me what happened here? Asked Garp the scion who remained silent. Garp figured that talking wouldn't accomplish anything so he gave the last warning look, it's better for you to answer now than later in prison. Broly glanced at the man with a grin on his face, you think you can order me around weakling? Said Broly surprising the other marines by this. No one ever called the hero Garp a weakling. Garp didn't say anything when he suddenly started to laugh, leaving everyone around surprised by his action. Ha 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 boy, you are really something. This is the first time someone called me like that. Ha ha laughed Garp with all his might as he walked closer to Broly. He placed a hand on Broly's arm and squeezed it. He looked at the scion searching for a painful expression on his face, but to his surprise there were none. 
Broly just chuckled at the man in front of him. What are you doing, old man? Who told you that you could put your hand on my arm, said Broly as he grabbed Garp's arm with his own hand and squeezed the Vice Admiral arm only a little. Everyone was shocked when they heard a yell coming from Garp. Even though Broly squeezed his arm with little force, it was more than enough to make the old Marine yell in pain. Broly soon released the hold from the old Marine's arm and evilly smiled at the Garp painful expression, You really are strong for such a young man, but do you know that you just raised a hand on a Marine? For that, you can go to jail, stated Garp, who tried to hide any sign of him been hurt. Even though this wasn't his style, he wanted to see the Scion reaction and what could he do TCH, you think I care for that? You could never put a scratch on me let alone put me in jail, exclaimed Broly who was getting bored with this game. He thought the man would try to attack him and that he could have some fun before finding more food. His thoughts were cut when he heard noises from the crowd. He looked away from the old Marine and noticed a group of people passing through the Marines. Whoa, what's going on here? Asked Luffy curiously as he approached the Marines while the rest of the crew was just behind his back. Yeah, what's all this commotion about? Added Sanji as he put a cigarette in his mouth and fired it up. Well, well, you see, the Vice Admiral tried to bring down that tall guy, but instead, that freak almost crashed Vice Admiral Garparm said Kobe who was a little afraid of this. He looked at Luffy wondering if he was worried about his grandfather while wow, really? He almost crushed Grandpa's arm? He must be really strong! Yelled Luffy who was excited now and didn't bother that he was hurt by everyone because he just needed to know who was this guy is shut up moron! How is that a good thing? It's clear that guy is dangerous yelled Nami at Luffy who didn't even heard what she said and kept smiling yeah yeah, Nami is right Luffy. This guy looks pretty dangerous, said Chopper, who was afraid of the tall scion and moved behind Zoro's legs. Would you let go of my legs, Chopper? But yeah, this guy looks really strong, stated Zoro, while he tried to free himself from little Chopper's stronghold garp, turned to his grandson and his crew. While he was still holding his arm, which hurt, what are you doing here, Luffy? You should be far from here. You are, after all, a pirate, said Garp, only to see Luffy smiling, which angered the Vice Admiral a little, I know. But our ship is not ready yet, and I heard this guy is stronger than you. So I come to see this, answered Luffy as he laughed at his grandfather, who was now boiling with anger, you stupid kid, who said he was stronger than me. I admit he is strong, but not as strong as me. And leave this to me, you just watch Luffy and don't do anything stupid, warned Garp as he turned away from Luffy and glanced back at Broly who didn't look pleased by all of this commotion, I'm sorry for the interruptions, there will be no more. Now if I remember correctly you said that I couldn't be able to put a scratch on you, right? Asked Garp as he tightened his fist which was behind his back, yes, I said that. All of you are too weak to. Broly didn't have a chance to finish what he wanted to say when out of nowhere he felt a punch on his right cheek. Garp stepped back from Broly after he punched him, but little did he know that what he did could cost him his life. What you say now, young man? That should have hurt a little, right? Exclaimed Garp with a smile on his face, not knowing what he just did could be his last. Broly didn't move at all. He was lost in his thoughts. How dare he, a nobody, a weak fool punch him in the face? Broly's mind was racing and only wanted to kill the man in front of him. Broly slowly turned his head towards Garp and dangerously looked at him. Garp was a little bit intimidated by the expression on the scion face while the other marines sweated in fear you made a grave mistake old man spoke Broly with a very low and dangerous voice as he slowly started approaching Garp who could see the scion intentions on his face boy, you better stop whatever you think of doing. I will have no choice but to arrest you said Garp but Broly didn't even heard what he said. The scion walked close to Garp and glared straight in the old man's eyes. Before Garp could even think of something to say, he only felt a lot of pain coming from his stomach. He was forced to spit some of his blood because of the powerful punch. The marine hero fell on his knees trying to catch some air. Everybody who was around the two yelled in shock and worry for the vice admiral. Kobe and Helmeppo were frozen by fear along with Nami and Chopper. Sanji and Zoro were surprised, but... They quickly snapped from it as they looked at their captain, to see if he wanted to do something. Luffy was just standing there, watching his grandfather on his knees. He knew that if this guy could do this to his grandfather that meant only one thing hey guys spoke Luffy who immediately caught the attention from the others what is it Luffy? Asked Zoro who was ready for action and step in if needed do you want something to do about this? He is your grandfather after all so I understand said Sanji as he picked the cigarette from his mouth and glanced at Luffy this guy is strong. 
If he could do something like that to my grandfather then he must be super strong. It's awesome. Yelled the young pirate only to shock all of the crew members. Well almost all of them are you serious? He almost killed your grandfather there and he could still do it. Yelled Nami at her captain because of his stupid exclamations and shook him out. Don't worry he will be fine. He received more beatings than this laughed Luffy on which Nami just let go of her captain and mumbled something while Luffy walked away from them. Wait, where are you going? Yelled Sanji who had a bad feeling about what's about to happen leave him be, you know him. When he puts something on his mind he will do it exclaimed Zoro as he closed his eyes and crossed his arms he, he's right agreed Robin with a smile on her face while Nami still continued mumbling something I'm sure he will do something stupid said Chopper who was still hiding behind Zoro and observed the whole situation while Garp was on his knees, Broly was just standing there in front of him. The Scion thought what to do with the weak man in front of him. The tall Scion was struggling in his mind. Like so many times, there were two voices inside his head telling him what to do. One voice was telling him to kill the man in front of him, to kill all the people around him. They were weak, they didn't deserve to live. The beast inside of him was telling him what to do and what annoyed Broly about that voice it was the fact that it sounded similar to his father's voice while the beast wanted to kill all the mankind. Another voice emerged inside the scion's head. This voice was calm, gentle. This voice came to him few times already, but he never listened to this voice. The other, wild voice was always stronger, but this time, it was different. This calm and gentle voice was loud as the other one, and that was what irritated Broly Broly who gritted his teeth didn't even notice that somebody approached him until he heard somebody calling him. He snapped from his thoughts and glanced at the young man in front of him. What surprised the scion was that the man in front of him was smiling. Broly didn't understand why. Was he mocking him? Was he trying to fight or was it something else? Hey tall guy, you must be really strong to be able to put my grandfather on the ground like this, said Luffy as he smiled at Broly who figured by now that this boy was the grandson of the weak man. Broly gritted his teeth at the thought of family. Memories of his father torture and ordering around rushed through his mind, making him angry, but he snapped from that when the man in front of him called him again. I don't know why you started a fight with him and honestly, I don't care. The marines are always like that, that's why it's better to be a pirate exclaimed Luffy as he looked at the scion still with a big smile on his face pirate, said Broly quietly, but more like asking what he meant by that. Luffy was the only one who heard him and started talking yeah, a pirate. You can do whatever you want, sail across the sea and have a lot of adventure and meet new friends. But above all, you can drink whatever you want and eat a lot whenever you want. It's fun and that's the reason I decided to become a pirate explained Luffy as he laughed while Broly only kept staring at him. Part of him wanted to laugh at the man in front of him for the nonsense that he was talking and kill him, but the other voice for some reason was telling him to listen to the young man in front of him to the very end so I was thinking since you're strong and that the marines are after you, why don't you join my crew? We can be friends and have many adventures! exclaimed Luffy in full excitement while the scion was standing there surprised by this. This was the first person in his entire life to offer him something like this. Be friends, have fun. These things were unknown to Broly, these things were always considered weaknesses by his father. The beast inside was telling him to smash the fool to the ground and destroy everything, but suddenly he remembered something I told you I will beat you Broly, and I could only do it with the help of my friends and family he remembered what Kakarot said in their last moments. Kakarot was able to beat him because he had friends, then did that mean something? As he was thinking he was getting irritated, he hated when he was in positions like this. Usually, his father would tell him what to do. No, he would order him around, but he was not here anymore. Then it was when Broly remembered that he was free, he was not someone's tool anymore, he could do whatever he wants without his father ordering him around and this man would not order him what to do. No, he said he wanted to be a friend. For the first time in his life, he could be able to decide something on his own and he was about to do it. Listen, Broly started talking and caught Luffy's attention. If I agree on this, I want you to know that when I fight, I fight alone in my way and don't you dare stop me, declared Broly quietly on which Luffy nodded as he lowered his hat and one more thing, I do whatever I want without people ordering me around. Got it? Added Broly on which Luffy just smiled sure thing as long you are with us, laughed Luffy as he tapped Broly on his chest which surprised the scion. Oh, I forgot to tell you my name. My name is Monkey D. Luffy and I'm gonna be the king of the pirates, I'm Broly.
Silence. Nobody said a word while Luffy and Broly talked with each other until the moment when Luffy asked the Scion to join his pirate crew. A lot of shock gasps were heard from the Marines as well as from the Vice Admiral who immediately stood up. While all of the Marines gasped at this, the members of the Straw Hat crew yelled at their captain in shock and anger for making such an important decision on its own. What are you doing, Luffy? You can't decide that on your own. Yelled Nami angrily at Luffy for making this kind of decision on its own, especially since they didn't know a thing about that guy well. Actually, he can. He is the captain, stated Robin calm as ever, while Nami glared at her from her left for saying that now of all times, Bob, but that guy is scary and dangerous, said Chopper quietly while he was still hiding behind Zoro's legs. Next to them, Sanji just tried to stay calm as he smoked his cigarette. I knew something like this could happen. We don't have any other choice than to go on with this, exclaimed Zoro as he crossed his arms while Nami, Sanji, and Chopper could only nod and hope this will end up well while his crew members talked about this predicament, Luffy and Broly were still standing on the same spot. As Broly told Luffy his name, the pirate was now curious to know some things about his new crew member. What really caught Luffy's attention were the scars on Broly's chest. Hey, where did you got those scars? I'm sure you fought someone really strong, said Luffy, who was excited to hear the story as he scanned all the scars on Broly upper body. Taha, it was a nobody. Now, do you have something to eat? Because the meat I eat wasn't enough, asked Broly, who was slowly getting irritated because he really didn't want to think about his battle with Kakarot. Now, plus, he was hungry and he wanted to eat. The young pirate in front of him nodded and smiled as he turned around. Come with me. I have the best cook in the world and my crew. He makes the best food, trust me laughed Luffy as he started to walk toward his crewmates. Broly nodded and started to follow Luffy who happily walked in front. They didn't even bother, with the shocked marines who were around and in front of them. All of them immediately moved away, scared of the scion and of the young pirate. The duo was close to their crewmates when they heard someone calling Luffy from behind Luffy, are you sure about this? Because if he joins your crew I will. Before Vice Admiral Garp could finish his sentence, Luffy just laughed and glanced at his grandfather. He, don't worry Gramps, everything will be fine, said Luffy as he waved his right hand and resumed walking towards his friends with Broly who was just behind him, stupid brat. He doesn't even know how dangerous this man could be. Well, he is my grandson, ha ha ha, laughed Garp, but quickly stopped because of the strong pain that he felt. He stopped and calmed down to take a breath and gave new orders to his man, listen up everyone. We are going back to our ship. Let's go, Kobe, Helmippo yelled Garp on which everyone nodded and walked away, towards their ship. As Luffy and Broly walked through the crowd, they came across Kobe and Helmippo who were about to pass by them. Luffy smiled at them while Broly had his usual cold expression, Luffy, he hope hey, we will meet again someday soon and I promise you that I will be much stronger than what I'm now, exclaimed Kobe as he determinedly clenched his fists on which Luffy nodded sure and I can't wait to see you again, Kobe. Train hard because you will need it, said Luffy with a small smirk on which Kobe smiled and passed right beside Luffy with El Nepo on his left side. Luffy and Broly approached their group when the pirate was suddenly punched in the head. What do you think you are doing? You can't decide everything on your own, especially something this important. Shouted Nami as she tried not to punch Luffy once again. Aw, oh, calm down Nami, everything will be fine. Oh. I almost forgot spoke Luffy who turned his gaze from Nami to Sanji. Hey Sanji, could you make some food for Broly? He's very hungry, asked Luffy who didn't bother with the fact that Nami was strangling him. You are totally hopeless, Luffy. Fine, I will make him something, but I need to go out and buy some groceries, replied Sanji as he put a new cigarette in his mouth and walked away from the group. Okay, and buy a lot of food. I'm hungry too, yelled Luffy to Sanji who just waved with his hand as he walked on. Now that that's settled, let's go in the house and wait for. Sanji exclaimed Luffy happily and with Broly and the others walked inside the house while all of them waited for Sanji to come back. At the shore where the marine ship was located, Garp and his man just climbed aboard their ship when they noticed a person on a deck chair. The marines quickly surrendered the man not knowing who he was. The man woke up because of the footsteps and with one eye open greeted the marines. Hey easy now boys, I just come here because I thought you could take me with you back at HQ. You see my bicycle broke Sue. You know, said the man to the marines who by now noticed who the man was. They all put their rifles down and salute the man, my, my what are you doing here, Akiji? Asked Garp as he approached the younger man who remained lying on the deck chair. I told you why I'm here, but there's another reason and you know it already, right? 
answered the admiral, but also asked a question on which Garp just remained silent you were ordered to capture the Straw Hat Pirates, but I assume since he's your family you couldn't do it, and I'm okay with that, but after what happened at Eni's lobby and with that man there, there's no way for you or me to ignore that. You must capture them or Sengoku will be furious at you and me stated Akiji as he glanced at Garp who nodded and with anger tightened his fists fine. I will do it! said Garp a bit louder and turned towards the Marines men prepare the ship for battle. Now the Vice Admiral shouted at his man who just nodded and followed their orders. Meanwhile, the Straw Hat Pirates were inside the house waiting for Sanji to finish cooking. On the table, Luffy was playing with his fork and knife while he was waiting for food. Nami, Chopper, and Robin were also at the table, each of them doing their own thing while Zoro was leaning on the wall with his arms crossed. While all of them were doing something, Broly was just sitting there silent with his usual cold expression. Here and there he caught a glimpse of Chopper who would look at him for a moment and quickly moved his eyes back to the book he was reading when he noticed that he was caught staring. Broly wondered who was the little, talking furball creature. He knew that the little furball was afraid of him and the scion just chuckled at that. Many beings in the galaxies were afraid of him and he enjoyed that. The scion snapped from his thoughts when Luffy break the silence. Triple A Sanji, how long we need to wait? I'm so hungry. Whined Luffy as he put his head on the table. Broly could agree with the young pirate, he was also hungry. He glanced at the cook to see what will he say. He would better be over with it soon or else calm down for a second. It will be ready in five minutes, yelled Sanji from the kitchen as he cooked the meal for Luffy and the new crew member him. Okay, mumbled Luffy who couldn't do anything about that and just wait for a bit longer. He thought about what to do while he waited for the food when he looked at Broly and thought that he could maybe have a talk with him since the others were doing something else. Hey Broly, where did you come from? Asked Luffy out of blue. This question caught the attention of everyone in the room. To be honest, everyone were curious about their new crew member and they wanted to know more of him. Vegeta answered Broly with a low voice as his cold expression remained on his face. Even though he was ordered to be killed by his planet ruler, he was proud of where he come from and by what he heard about his proud warrior race Vegeta. I never heard of that. Did you, Nami? Asked Luffy while he shifted his eyes towards Nami as she stopped drawing something in her notebook. No, I never heard of that place. Maybe it's somewhere far from here. Did you ever heard of that place, Robin? Asked Nami the black-haired girl across the table while she continued to think if there was a place called like that. Unfortunately, I never heard of a place that goes by that name, but I would like to see it, stated Robin who was curious about her new crew member hometown and smiled at the scion who just looked away with his eyes near me too. There must be some strong guys. Exclaimed Luffy, all excited about this while Sanji arrived with plates filled with food on his hands, I must agree. I wonder what kind of food they make in order for you to be that strong, said Sanji as he put the plates on the table and sat on the chair close to Luffy, yeah. Sue. We will go there. Someday. Okay, Broly? Asked Luffy as he stuffed almost all the food in his mouth and chewed it down, hey don't eat everything you pick. Yelled Sanji at Luffy who didn't even heard the cook and continued eating. But what surprised all of them was how Broly was eating. All of them except Luffy were surprised by Broly's eating. I can't believe this year me too he eats as much as Luffy does. Unbelievable exclaimed Nami who like others was shocked that there was someone who could eat as much as their captain. He 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 I see you like food as much as I do laughed Luffy as he grabbed the last piece of meat from the plate and eat it all oh, that was good. Right Broly? Asked I Luffy his new friend who only grunted and swallowed the last piece from his plate. Luffy didn't wait for any second and again asked the same question so, is it okay with you that we visit your home someday? I really want to fight with strong people like you exclaimed Luffy who was very excited that he almost fell from his chair no responded Broly with his usual expression while the others curiously glanced at the scion wondering why would he decline huh? Why not? Asked Luffy who felt like all of his dreams were crushed because I don't have a home. My home was destroyed 26 years ago, answered Broly, which made him wonder why was he even telling him that, about his past, when it didn't even matter. It began to annoy the scion while the others gasped in shock, well, what? Yelled Luffy who couldn't believe that his new friend home was destroyed, destroyed how? Asked Nami with her eyes wide open because of the shock. 
It was the same situation like what happened with Robin's homeland, and she was sure that only the Marines could do something like that. Don't tell me it was the Marines, said Sanji, who seriously glanced at the Scion as he remembered just like Nami what the Marines did with Robin Holm. No way mumbled Chopper in disbelief while Zoro and Robin remained silent. Robin was shocked more than anyone. She never imagined that there was somebody who lived through hell like she did. His home was destroyed like hers, and she wondered why would the Marines do that when Broly answered their questions. Ha, ah, there's no way those weaklings could do something like that, spoke Broly as he chuckled at this ridiculous idea. The Scion stood up from the chair and continued, I was only a baby when I escaped and survived the planet explosion, concluded Broly as he walked towards the wooden doors and walked out, leaving the others shocked and confused what a tragedy spoke the blonde cook first after the Scion walked out as he exhaled the smoke, yeah. He was only a baby when his home exploded, added Nami as she sat down on her chair after the initial shock passed while Robin continued to stare at the doors I can't. Imagine how he felt said Chopper on which all of them nodded while Luffy remained thinking very hard about something that Broly said at the end hold on a second. Didn't he said that the planet exploded? Asked Luffy on which all the people who were in the living room stared at Luffy with their eyes wide open as they also remembered what the Scion said at the very end. Everyone in the living room were without any words after Broly went outside. They were all thinking the same thing. Did Broly really said that the planet exploded and what did that mean? The first one to say something was the cook as he put down the cigarette. I think he mistook something spoke Sanji calmly even though he was still a bit shocked. But the blonde cook just couldn't believe that Broly was some guy from outer space. It was unbelievable. S.E.S. you were right Sanji. We clearly mistook what he said, right? Asked Nami as she waved with her hand and tried to assure the others just like herself that they all heard it wrong. Yeah, you are right, Nami. There is no way that Broly is from another planet, right? Asked Chopper who did the same thing with his hand as Nami and smiled, but you heard him, guys. He said that his planet exploded. How cool would it be to have a crew member from some other planet? Exclaimed Luffy all happy about the fact to have a strong alien in his pirate crew and together sail across the sea you can't be serious Luffy and that's ridiculous. He probably hit his head or something. He looks just like any ordinary human and there's no way that he's from another planet explained Zoro who didn't believe that Broly could be from outer space. It was too ridiculous to even think about that Zoro is right and besides, we should talk about something really important Luffy agreed Nami and with a worried expression on her face looked at Luffy what do you mean Nami? Asked the straw hat captain who didn't quite understand what Nami meant to say. I mean, what about you, Sop? Shouldn't we find him before the ship is ready? Said Nami to Luffy who immediately remembered about his and Usopp's fight. He was about to say something when Sanji joined the conversation. I wouldn't worry too much about that. Nami spoke Sanji who stood from the chair and collected the empty plates from the table. Huh? I saw him while I was coming back from the shop. He was on the beach preparing his glorious comeback speech, explained Sanji as he walked towards the kitchen while Luffy, Nami, and Chopper happily smiled, really? Are you sure, Sanji? Asked the little doctor of the crew on which Sanji just nodded, that's awesome. Let's go and find him right now, Chopper. Yelled Luffy excited to reunite with Usopp again on which Chopper nodded and the two were about to run out when somebody stopped them, stop Luffy. I don't agree with this exclaimed Zoro as he moved away from the wall and approached Luffy to have a serious conversation with him while they had a serious conversation inside the house. The legendary Scion was outside walking near the sea. He stopped and just stood there while the wind went through his black spiky hair. He looked up in the sky and thought for a moment if this was a good thing to do. The pirate boy did tell him that there are strong opponents and that it will be great, but Broly was suspicious. The pirate crew seemed too good and Broly was feeling uncomfortable with it. Well, he did spend all of his life only surrounded with a bad father and he was a scion. He quickly tossed away that thought as he started to walk away. He would think about that later. For now, he will see what this pirate crew and the planet can offer to him as the scion walked away. He didn't notice that somebody was not too far away watching him. The man with a long nose was scared of the scion. Even though no one from his crew saw him here, he did saw what the Scion was capable of and that scared him what was Luffy thinking by asking this guy to join the crew. He looked scary thought Usopp as he walked away from the rock that he was hiding behind and thought of something else. Oh, I should better think of some cool comeback speech said Usopp out loud and didn't notice that he walked into the sea some time passed and the Scion returned to the house. Like always he remained silent while he was sitting on the chair while the others were doing their own things. 
Some of them wanted to ask the scion what he really meant before he walked out, but they quickly snapped from that when they heard somebody calling them. They were just thinking to walk out from the house and see who was looking for them when the two square sisters slammed the wooden doors and entered inside. Hey, why are the two of you in such a rush? Asked the little doctor who's sitting on the floor while he was slowly packing the medicine that he bought on this island. I was about to ask the same thing, added Sanji, who was kneeling beside Chopper and helped the talking reindeer. We have great news, said one of the Square Sisters as she tried to catch a breath here what she says. Big bro Frankie just finished the ship and you can sail when you want. Added the other sister a bit louder as she also, like her sister, tried to breath really. The ship is already finished, yelled Luffy, all happy and excited to see their new ship, which was supposed to carry them all over to the new world. The others were excited as much as Luffy was and couldn't wait to see their new ship while Broly just remained there silent and with his usual cold expression. He didn't understand why would they be so much excited about some ship. Nonsense, aha. You can go and see it now if you want. Yeah, it's ready to sail. That's great. Let's go, everybody, exclaimed Luffy, on which the others happily nodded and were ready to go see the ship when they heard a lot of noises coming from outside. This time, they walked outside the house only to see the Frankie family members coming their way. Straw Hat Pirates, we have an important news. Yelled somebody from the group as they just stopped in front of the crew. Huh? What is it with you guys? Asked one of the sisters while the man tried to catch a breath so they could properly speak and warn the pirates this. All of you have a bounty after what happened in Eni's lobby yelled the leader of the crowd on what most of the pirates were happy while some were terrified about that. The crew looked at their new wanted posters. Luffy and Zoro were pleased with their new bounties while Sanji, Chopper and Nami were having a really bad time. Broly who was standing behind them didn't quite understood what was the meaning of this posters what are those posters about? Asked Broly as he observed the wanted poster of a guy with a long nose and noticed the number below his name. You don't know about them, Broly? Asked Robin as she was the only one who heard the question since she was the closest to the Scion know well. You see these wanted posters are only released when there are dangerous pirates. The bigger bounty means that the pirate is dangerous and strong explained Robin to the Scion on which he only nodded and figured what that meant. These bounty posters were similar like power levels. While Broly looked at other wanted posters, Robin was still looking at the Scion. He was mysterious to her which made her wonder what really happened to him and from where was he. Her thoughts were cut when she heard the news about Frankie and that he too received a bounty. The members of the Frankie family pleaded Luffy to take Frankie with them on which the captain of the Straw Hat Pirates gladly agreed on that. The Frankie family were glad to hear that and quickly run away in search for Frankie he 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 this is so awesome. My bounty went up. We have a new ship and another crew member. Yelled Luffy who was very happy and couldn't wait to see the new ship which Frankie made. I agree with you captain. My bounty went up too. He agreed Zoro with a smile on his face while Chopper yelled at the whole world only 50. And a pet? I'm not a pet damn it. I'm a doctor. I fought too. Yelled Chopper as he tightened the hold on the paper while tears formed on his eyes. Well, you need to try harder next time, advised Luffy while Chopper started to cry as for Sanji who was looking more like a zombie than a human. Ha, how is this? T, this is not me. Sanji barely mumbled something since he felt like he was dying from only looking at his drawn picture on the poster. What are you talking about? They draw you perfectly, laughed Zoro, on which Sanji just again mumbled something which no one understood. We will worry about this later. Now we should run away from here and get aboard the ship, suggested Nami as she looked at Luffy who agreed with the navigator. Yeah, you are right, Nami. Listen everyone, let's go and pack our stuff and run away from here. Yelled Luffy on which everyone nodded and with their captain went inside to pack their stuff while Broly remained outside alone, waiting for them since he didn't have anything to pack. He only had what he had on himself and that was more than enough for the Scion. The only thing he wanted was to leave this place as soon as possible and hopefully find someone worth a fighting because he was eager to have a fight to release his power. Broly just smirked and waited for the others to come back while the pirate crew was getting ready to leave the town of water. The marine ship was getting closer to the place where the new straw hat ship was located. Even though Garp didn't want to catch his grandson and his friends he didn't have a choice. He cursed to himself at the thought of catching his own blood, but he really didn't have a say in the matter. His thoughts were cut when a young marine approached him, Vice Admiral Garp, sir. We are close to the location where the ship of the pirates is located, reported the marine on which Garp just nodded good. Now go and prepare everyone for battle, ordered Garp as he stood on the front side of the ship with his hands crossed as the marines were slowly getting close to their target. The pirates were close to their new ship. 
They all run fast so they could see their new ship and sail on a new adventure. Broly at first thought of just flying to the ship, but he decided not to. He was sure that none of them knew how to fly and he himself didn't know where exactly the ship was located. After a few minutes they were already at the shore when they saw a huge ship waiting for them, ready to sail. Wow, it's amazing. You can say that again, did Frankie really did all of that? Well, he did have some help spoke Iceberg as he walked close to the group surprising them with his presence. The ship is beautiful. I can't wait to ride on it said Nami as she looked at the ship and the sails. Let's go and see how it looks yelled Luffy and with the others quickly went to aboard the ship while Broly slowly walked towards the ship. To be honest, he was surprised by the look of the ship. He was suspicious about the planet technology and how much advanced it was and this just confirmed his suspicions. He never saw or ride a ship which looked like this and was a little bit curious. He slowly boarded the ship and scanned it whole. It looked nice and it had a lot of free space which will do good to his training. He sat on the grassy ground while he leaned his back on the fence and waited for the captain to give the orders to sail. After looking at what the ship has to offer, Luffy climbed the fence and looked down at Iceberg. Hey Ice Pops this is an awesome ship, but where is Frankie? This is his ship after all and I want him in my crew. Yelled Luffy who didn't get it why Frankie wouldn't be here and set sail with them on the ship that he made I know what you mean, so you must listen to what I'm about to say said the mayor of the town, which made Luffy confused. Meanwhile in the streets of Water 7, Usopp was running towards the shore. When he heard that the new ship is ready he quickly grabbed his things and went to the shore. While he was running he was thinking of what to say when he sees the others haha, I'm sure they will wait for me. Of course, they wouldn't leave with their most important crew member. They will be happy to see me. Haha laughed Usopp as he run through the street, but little did he know that his crew members had big problems. Everything seemed fine and great. Frankie was dragged to the shore and with a little persuasion, he accepted the invitation to the crew. But their happy time was ruined by the Marines. All of a sudden the Marines showed up and started to fire cannonballs at the Straw Hat Pirates. Frankie, Zoro, and Sanji quickly boarded the ship and were ready to leave. We need to get away from here fast otherwise our new ship will sink to the bottom of the sea exclaimed Nami on which everybody nodded and prepared to sail. You are right Nami, but what about Usopp? Asked Chopper who was worried about Usopp and he didn't want to leave this place without him. Listen we don't have any other choice. We need to move otherwise it's over said Frankie on which the others couldn't but agree and with sad expression on their faces each of them resumed their battle positions. Where is that moron? Is he really not coming back thought Sanji as he ran on the rear side of the ship, while behind him was Zoro, Luffy, and Robin. When they arrived at the back of the ship it was clear to see who was firing the cannonballs. Hey is it me or is that Luffy s grandfather throwing cannonballs at us asked Sanji as he focused on the man who was throwing cannonballs at them that old man. Hey, Grandpa, you said you will leave us alone. Yelled Luffy loud enough so he could be heard by his grandfather on the other ship, on the marine ship. Garp just smiled as he prepared himself to throw another cannonball, sorry Luffy, but I'm a marine and I must capture every pirate. It's your fault that you're a criminal, Luffy yelled Garp back as he threw another cannonball, Gur you will never catch us. Yelled Luffy once again and took a deep breath to pump himself to a balloon and bounce back the cannonball which surprised the scion. He thought that the pirate will kick it back or something, but he just looked like a balloon, what was he? I never saw someone throw cannonballs like that said Zoro as he sliced few cannonballs that were coming his way. Their attention was suddenly caught by Chopper who yelled that he could smell Usopp. All of them looked at the shore only to see Usopp running toward the end of the beach. Hey, guys come on you can't leave without your best man, right? Come on guys yelled Usopp who was near his breaking point as he saw that the ship was going far away by every second that passed. No one on the ship even looked at Usopp as they waited for him to say what he really needed to say, when they suddenly heard a loud yelling, please stop, please. I'm sorry everyone. I know I can be stupid sometimes, but I don't want to be alone. I need you guys, please. Cried Usopp as a waterfall of tears fell across his cheeks. Everyone aboard the ship heard what Usopp said and Luffy immediately threw his hand towards Usopp. Usopp looked at the hand that was in front of him when he heard Luffy just grab at you, idiot. Yelled Luffy while he cried. Usopp nodded with a loud cry and grabbed the hand with which he was brought back to the ship. While Luffy and Usopp were on the ground half crying half laughing Broly watched Luffy with a surprised expression. He just saw Luffy stretching his hand all over to the shore and that was what amazed the scion. 
He never saw someone doing something like that in his life. He traveled across the universe and saw many things, but he never saw something like this. He snapped from his thoughts when he heard a noise coming his way. He looked up and saw a cannonball coming his way. The scion just smirked and put his left hand in front, ready to catch a ball when he saw Sanji jumped in and kicked the ball away. Be a little bit more careful, said Sanji, who immediately jumped away. Broly just gritted his teeth in irritation. He didn't need any help. Did they consider him weak? If there was any doubt in his strength, he was sure to show them what true power really is. Snapped from his thoughts when he heard Frankie talking, that's all nice, but we need to escape from here and before we do, I think it would be the best to name the ship, suggested Frankie as he looked at everyone on which all of them nodded, you are right, but how will we name it? Asked the navigator as she tried to think of a best fitted name for their new ship, I know how. Let's call it the Beast Monkey Lion King. Exclaimed Luffy only to be smacked at the back of the head by Usopp, no, that's a terrible name. Yelled Usopp who couldn't even believe how Luffy managed to come out with that name before any of you start to suggest a name. I think I have a very good one. What about the Thousand Sunny? Suggested Frankie on which Luffy immediately agreed while the others nodded and were alright with the name. Even though he tried to suggest some other names which sounded better to him, no one listened and decided to let it go. Great now all of you wait here. I have a big surprise for all of you and brace yourselves because we are about to have an superior ride stated Frankie as he ran inside the ship leaving the other confused, but they snapped from it when they heard the cannon balls. Luffy deflected the balls and jumped on the fence of the ship. Hey, Grandpa, I don't know what will happen now, but you will never catch us. Yelled Luffy with a smile on his face towards his grandfather only to make him angry. What are you talking about, Brad? You will never escape from me. Marine, bring my favorite ball ordered Garp on which the Marine nodded and with few others went to bring the Vice Admiral his favorite ball on the ship. Everyone was doing their best while Broly was just standing there and observed how everyone protected the ship. What amazed him were the abilities of Luffy and Robin. He could stretch like a rubber and she could grow as many hands as she wanted. This was really some weird place and Broly wondered what those abilities were. He snapped from his thoughts when he saw something big on a Marine ship. But he wasn't the only one to notice that GA guys are you seeing what I'm seeing? Is that really a huge cannonball? Yelled Usopp who was scared and shocked to see such a big cannonball amazing look at the size of that ball exclaimed Nami with her eyes wide open he that's my grandpa laughed Luffy as he observed his grandfather holding the huge cannonball with one hand this is not the time to laugh Luffy. Yelled Zoro angrily at his captain for having such fun time in the middle of this situation he is right. If we don't move away quickly, we will die said Robin and agreed with Zoro while she stood behind them calm as ever Frankie. Whatever you think of doing, now is the best time to do it. Yelled Sanji and hoped that Frankie could hear him from the inside the ship yeah, yeah, hold on to something guys. Here it goes! Exclaimed Frankie with a smile on his face as the machinery in front of him started to shake. Outside, on the rear side of the ship, everyone was shocked and afraid as Garp threw his huge cannon ball towards their ship. The ball was coming in fast. Broly glanced at the ball above his head and only smirked. He placed his right hand above his head and was ready to obliterate the ball when suddenly the ship started to shake. To his and everyone else's surprise, they were set flying into the air. All of the crew members laughed and were amazed by this stunt while Broly quickly returned his cold expression and remained silent. Everyone on the marine ship was shocked and speechless by what the pirates did, but Garp only laughed with all his might. Haha, ha, I knew that the kid was up to something. He is my grandson after all, haha. Ha. Man, we are going back to HQ. Ordered Garp as he turned to his man and for the last time looked back at the place where his grandson and the crew flew. Be careful Luffy, now the real thing begins. Good luck, said Garp quietly as he continued to stare after they passed few miles the sunny landed on the sea while the crew only smiled and with relief saw that they are far away from the marines. To be sure that they couldn't catch up with them, they quickly set the sails and sailed towards their new destination. While all of them were doing something, Broly glanced back at the place from where they flew off and wondered if he will soon find a worthy opponent. He turned around after he heard that they were calling him and joined with the others who celebrated the return of Usopp and Robin, the celebration for the new crew members and as well for the new ship. For days passed since the Straw Hat Pirates escaped from the Marines and left Water 7. 
After they escaped, they celebrated a little and introduced Broly to Usopp and Frankie, who didn't know of the new crew member until now. These four days were nice for the crew. Frankie showed everything he made on the Sunny, and everyone liked it. While all of them enjoyed their time for the past four days, one of the crew members didn't like this at all. As the others were having fun, the legendary Scion was growing frustrated with this. He thought he would find someone to fight by now, but this was a nightmare for the Scion. Sure he trained for the past four days on the back of the ship all alone, but that wasn't enough for the strong Scion. Yes, he did more than 20,000 push-ups every day, but that was nothing for him. His Scion blood was looking for a fight, for a challenge. Broly just finished his last push-ups and thought if there is not any fight soon, he would leave this ship and look alone for a challenge. The Scion snapped from his thoughts when he heard Zoro's voice through the speaker. The Scion stood up and walked towards the main deck to see what happened. When he arrived there he saw Luffy, Usopp, Chopper and Frankie around some barrel while Zoro climbed down the watchtower and Sanji, Robin and Nami walked out from the kitchen he let's open it and see what's inside suggested Luffy as he put his hands on the top of the barrel, ready to open it any time, are you sure? Who knows what could be inside asked Usopp as he scanned the whole barrel before Luffy could open it you don't think something scary is inside? Asked Chopper already imagining that something scary and dangerous could be inside which made him back away a bit from the barrel maybe there is some cola inside that barrel said Frankie who was sitting on the ground near them yeah maybe some booze too added Zoro who was by now standing near them oh come on who would put something like that in a barrel and throw it in the sea said Usopp who was skeptical about that but only to be corrected by Nami actually they are right many people put some food or drinks in barrels and throw them into the sea as an offering to a god explained Nami to the others who didn't know about that really. So there could be some food in here. Yelled Luffy excited and ready to open it when Usopp stopped him. Hey, wouldn't God be mad at us for stealing his food? I unlike you don't want to see the god's power unleashed against us exclaimed Usopp who was already getting afraid and tried to reason Luffy to give up on the barrel. Oh, come on, do you really believe in God? Didn't Luffy beat one already, so let's open it said Zoro who wanted to see what's inside and approached the barrel yeah but. Usopp tried to say something against that, but he was cut off by Nami you're gonna be okay, as long as we put something back into it said Nami on which Luffy nodded and started to open it alright, I'm gonna open it exclaimed the captain and almost opened it when suddenly something blasted into the sky from the barrel scaring the crew. They looked up and saw a red light that came out from the barrel. The light quickly faded. But the others were shaken a little by this. While they were talking and arguing, Broly looked far away at the sea. He had a feeling something will happen. He snapped from it when he heard the navigator ordering to change the course because the storm was coming. The others listened to their navigator and did what she said while Broly just stood there on the main deck watching the sky as it changed after some time passed. The crew entered into a fog. The fog was thick and it was hard to see anything. While the others were gathered together the Scion was alone, leaning on the fence of the ship still with a feeling like something will happen. He heard a scream coming from Usopp and Chopper. It would seem like Sanji and Frankie told them something scary which scared them, like always. Everyone remained silent for a moment when Usopp noticed a ship coming, a scary ship. The ship was all torn up, it had holes and the sails were all torn up, but that wasn't all. What scared them was a song coming from the ship, does anyone hear what I'm hearing? Asked Usopp who went all white from fear, yes, I can hear it too. What is it? Said Frankie as he looked at the sailing ship. As the ship was coming closer the crew could hear the song better. They looked up at the fence of the torn ship when they noticed someone there. The one who was standing. There was surely the one who sang. The shadow moved away from the person and it was visible to see him. Everyone was shocked and with eyes wide open when they saw a skeleton with an afro singing and drinking a tea. The ship stopped near them and the singing stopped. All of them turned to each other to confirm what they saw. As the other argued with Luffy, who wanted to go there and see the skeleton, Broly could hardly believe what he saw. He saw many things in his days, but a singing skeleton? This world was the weirdest by far. In this four days, he learned about the devil fruits and their abilities, but this was ridiculous. He glanced at his crew who picked some sticks from Zoro's hand. It turned out that those who pulled the smallest stick must go with Luffy to stop him from doing something stupid. While Luffy, Sanji, and Nami went to explore the ghost ship and see the singing skeleton, the others remained on the ship. 
As the others remained on the ship, Luffy, Sanji, and Nami climbed on the rope that was hanging from the ship. As they climbed, Luffy only smiled and couldn't wait to see what is up there while Nami cried in fear, Don't worry, Nami sweet. I'm here to protect you. I will kick everyone that come near you, exclaimed Sanji as he looked down and smiled at Nami. Yeah, and how do you intend to kick a ghost? asked Nami, who was afraid. She stopped for a moment and looked up when she saw a skeleton who was looking down at them. She couldn't hold it anymore and let a scream so loud that everyone could hear her. After she calmed Ned down they climbed up and they were surprised by what they saw in front of them. In front of them really was a skeleton wearing a suit and a stick hanging from his right wrist. What surprised them the most was the big afro on his head. The skeleton remained silent as he took another sip of his tea until he put his teacup on the nearby fence. Yo ho ho hello everyone, welcome to my ship, greeted the skeleton his three visitors whose eyes were wide open while look at him, guys. He really is a talking skeleton and he has an afro. So cool exclaimed Luffy who was amazed by the skeleton in front of his eyes. Well this really is bizarre added Sanji while Nami was beside him just as surprised as he was. Hey, skeleton guy can you poop? Asked Luffy the skeleton when he received a kick from Sanji, you idiot, what kind of a question is that? Yelled Sanji as he kicked Luffy in the head, but the captain didn't feel a thing, oh yes I can answer the skeleton on which Luffy laughed while Sanji was fuming with anger, hey don't answer that kind of questions, yelled Sanji at the skeleton, but the skeleton wasn't paying attention at the cook at all. He was looking at Nami who noticed that and was a little uncomfortable with that, oh my what a beautiful looking woman you are said the talking skeleton as he approached her which scared her a little, well thanks, but could you? Nami couldn't finish the sentence when the skeleton asked her something, could you perhaps, show me your panties? Asked the skeleton only to receive a kick to the head from Nami like hell you could. Yelled Nami at the skeleton who hit the ground with his head, yo ho ho a dangerous one, I like you exclaimed the skeleton while he laughed along with Luffy who liked the skeleton already, he he he, this guy is awesome. Hey, the skeleton would you join my crew? Asked Luffy only to frighten Sanji and Nami but they were too late to stop it, no Luffy. You can't do that, yes, I will join your crew, answered the skeleton who was already on his feet. While Luffy happily laughed, Nami and Sanji were without words. The three members of the crew returned to the ship with the skeleton. When they returned, they met with the shocked crew. Usopp, Chopper, and Frankie had their eyes wide open while Zoro angrily yelled at Nami and Sanji as Robin just smiled. While they argued about the skeleton, the scion was standing just behind the talking skeleton and wondered how was he alive. While he was thinking how was the skeleton alive, he heard Luffy inviting the skeleton for a dinner. While the others were against that the skeleton accepted the offer great, now come with me skeleton guy, Sanji makes the best food assured Luffy with a smile on his face while he walked towards the kitchen yo ho ho that's great. But my name is Brooke, not Skeleton explained Brooke on which Luffy nodded and with the skeleton walked in the kitchen while the others went in just behind them. Everyone sat at the table while Sanji prepared the food. While Luffy and Brooke talked, the others just watched them. It would seem that Luffy and the skeleton were alike in many ways so it seems he really is a living talking skeleton spoke Zoro as he looked at the two who were at the head of the table well, I suppose so added Robin who was on the other side of the table from where Zoro was. As Luffy and Brooke finished with their little conversation, Brooke noticed that the ship was really looking nice. Oh, I must say that this ship is very nice, exclaimed Brooke as he looked around the room. Yeah, of course it does, pal. I made it, said Frankie with a proud smile, while behind him Sanji was almost finished with the food. Frankie don't get friendly with the skeleton, warned Sanji who put the finished food on the plates and was ready to serve it to everyone. He, he Brooke, you are so funny. Sanji, where is the food? Yelled Luffy as he hit the table with his fork and knife. He was joined by the skeleton who moved his hands and screamed for the food along with Luffy here it is you, two idiots. Now shut up and eat yelled Sanji angrily at them and put the plates full of delicious food on the table so that everyone could eat. Luffy and Brooke immediately started to eat the food, but they weren't alone. The scion who was sitting near Luffy also attacked the food. The others slowly eat their food and still were amazed how the scion could eat as much as their captain. After some time, everyone finished their meals and someone asked Brooke what really happened to him. The skeleton explained to them how he died once, but thanks to the powers of his devil fruit he was able to come back to live. Everyone was surprised by this, they knew there were many devil fruits with strange powers, but this one was the strangest. Broly was surprised as much as the others, but his expression never showed his surprise. To think there was a fruit that would bring you back from the death was ridiculous. 
After they heard all of this Usopp and Chopper calmed down a bit, they could understand now, but they were still on their guard I see. Well I suppose something like that could happen, right? Asked Usopp the little doctor who was sitting right near him I guess. There are many devil fruits with strange powers answered Chopper who wasn't that scared anymore that may be true, but look at yourself. Do you know how would people react when they saw you like this? Asked Nami as she put a mirror in front of Brooke who immediately put his hands in front. Chopper and Usopp were confused by his reaction and looked into the mirror only to be shocked how? Hey, he, he doesn't have a reflection in the mirror. Yelled Usopp who immediately moved away from Brooke what? He, he's a vampire. Yelled Chopper who in fear jumped on Usopp while all the others immediately stood up from their chairs prepared for an attack huh? A vampire. Awesome. Yelled Luffy who remained on his chair all excited at the thought of Brooke being a vampire. While all of them were yelling, Broly reminded sitting, but he was slowly getting irritated by all this yelling. He was really getting tired of this and he was almost forced to react when he noticed that the skeleton stood up from the ground and started to talk you are right I don't have a reflection nor a shadow, because... It was stolen exclaimed Brooke who left others speechless and shocked. Was this even possible? Was there a way to steal someone's shadow? Thought Broly. But his thoughts were cut when Brooks started to explain everything. How he, five years ago, lost his shadow. How he was forced to live in this part of the sea for the last five years. I can't believe it. Is something like that even possible? Asked Usopp who couldn't believe this story. I wouldn't be too surprised, Usopp. There are many devil fruits and probably someone with that kind of power did that spoke Sanji as he fired up his cigarette. He's right at it, Frankie, who agreed with Sanji as he looked at Usopp. I must also tell you one more thing. You earlier said that you wanted me to join your crew and I would gladly accept it, but I can't said Brook who surprised Luffy by this, why not? You said you would join. Yelled Luffy who really wanted Brook and his crew. He liked the talking skeleton and they were already friends, I'm sorry, but I can't. I must first find and retrieve my shadow back, explained Brook as he turned around from the others, so we will help you. Tell us who stole it from you. Yelled Luffy again at Brook, he was sure to help him so he could be with them. It's better not to tell you his name. Forget about it. Why don't I sing a song for all of you? You have done so much for me, and I want to sing a song for all of you, exclaimed Brooke, who grabbed a violin from his bag, which was on the floor all the time. He turned around and was about to begin with playing it when he saw something on the roof. He stared at it speechless. The others wondered what it was when they heard Brooke saying it go ghost. Yelled Brooke and fell down on the floor. The others looked up and saw a white ghost. Everyone was shocked by this. They didn't know what to do while Usopp and Chopper screamed. Broly just stood up from his chair and had enough of this. He didn't know what he could do to a ghost, but he was determined to try something so that the others would shut up. The Scion put his left hand in front and aimed for the ghost, ready to fire an energy blast when suddenly the ship started to shake. He lost his balance and almost fell on the floor, but he managed to control his footing. The others also had a hard time standing when after some time the shaking stopped. While all of them were wondering what happened, Brooke already knew what it could be. He rushed outside and he confirmed his thoughts, I knew it. We are caught and declared Brooke who was heard by the crew caught. What do you mean? Asked Frankie who was just behind Brooke and wondered what he meant by that. Yeah, and what is with that mouth? Asked Luffy as he pointed with his right index X finger towards the closed mouth. Luffy didn't know that the mouth was actually it's a gate of this island. Wait, did you by any chance saw a barrel in the sea? Asked Brooke and by others' faces, he could tell that they did so he continued by opening that barrel you were marked as their prey explained Brooke who suddenly started to run inside the ship all over to the other side. Hey, why are you running? Asked Frankie as he come out from the ship with the others when they noticed an island in front of them. The island was scary looking and was covered by fog. This is Thriller Bark, a very dangerous island, stated Brooke while the others just kept staring at the island in front of them. So this is Thriller Bark, said Luffy quietly, on which Brooke just nodded and prepared himself to leave. Yes, and you must escape from here. You must open that mouth gate from behind and escape, explained Brooke as he put on his hat and jumped from where he was standing, surprising the others while that some jump, exclaimed Frankie, who was amazed by the high jump. Hey, Brooke, what are you doing? Shouted Luffy while he was holding on the fence of the ship, I must thank you for everything you did for me and please escape from here, yelled Brooke back so he could be heard and jumped in the water. The others were shocked since they thought he will drown because of his devil fruit, 
but they were wrong. They were amazed when they saw Brooke running on the surface while look at him go said Sanji who was surprised by the skeleton as he ran over the water I guess he is light enough to run on the surface added Frankie who smiled while he watched the skeleton go so Luffy, we should do what the skeleton said, right? Asked Nami who hoped that Luffy would agree with her and leave this scary place here Luffy, Nami is right. We should definitely do what Brooke told us said Usopp who was completely on Nami's side. They hoped that their captain would agree. But they were mistaken, huh? No way. We are going there. I'm sure we will have fun, exclaimed Luffy, who was very excited and couldn't wait to see what is on this island. The one who immediately agreed with Luffy was Broly. When he was asked by the others, he completely agreed with Luffy. He could always blast the stupid gate and they could be free, but he chose not to. Something was telling him that he could have some fun time on this island and he was going to have it either way.